Schneider, who is the Business Marketing and Information Director, and Madison Bodine, who oversees the APUC grant, and they are going to talk about how these programs can help your business grow. Thank you, Katie. Um, first off, she says John F. Schneider because when she started, she used to always just put John Schneider. There's a million John Schneiders in the world. And I one time said, just put the F in there, and she ever since then, it's John F. Schneider everywhere she, um, you see my name. So Anyway, um, welcome guys. I appreciate the your efforts to be here today. I know weather and and all kinds of stuff, but um, we were talking, I don't think this conference has ever gone on where it hasn't been a storm, uh, at least one of one day, and so um, we're kind of used to it, but we should just know it by now. Um, <laughs> if we plan it, it's gonna be a stormy day. I'm gonna talk to you about a couple programs at the Department of Commerce, we, or Department of Ag, excuse me. Um, we, uh, as you guys went around the room, you notice you, we have a lot of different products, we have a lot of different size businesses, um, we have some people that are just new to the, the Friday Dakota program, we have some of you that have been around for a while, and so we appreciate that, we appreciate you guys coming and, and um, getting information for the day. The first program I'm going to talk about today um, is a federal grant program. The uh, federal government uh, last year awarded North Dakota a, um, a resilient food system infrastructure program. Um, the federal government cannot name a program easy. They can't ever just say food grant. <laughs> um, so essentially North Dakota was awarded uh, 3.4 uh, million or 3.6 million dollars. Uh, we did not apply for it. They just notified us that egg departments um, were eligible um, to create a program and that North Dakota was um, allotted three, $3 million. There's two categories um, in this, and I know it's short notice. Uh, there's, um, the applications are due April 3rd. It has been out and advertised for a while. But this grant is essentially a, um, a grant for middle of the supply chain. So people ask me, what's middle of the supply chain? <laughs> um, uh, the easiest way to equate it, um, for me to think about it, is an ethanol plant. And so uh, the ethanol plant itself qualifies, the farmer growing the corn does not qualify, and the uh, gas station selling the ethanol does not qualify. You have to be middle of the, so you have to be in production, um, processing, something like that. Um, the, it's a one-time funding opportunity. The federal government has said it's not going to do it again, and the grant is competitive. And so there's many different projects that are applying. Um, some people are applying for um, uh, infrastructure, um, so building a building, adding on to a building. Um, they're um, asking for equipment. Under the, um, I'll start with the, the, the uh, equipment only portion of this. The equipment only portion, um, is, you're only eligible up to a maximum of $100,000 and it's a minimum of $10,000. And that's the federal government rule. Um, it must be specialized equipment. So it can't be just like an oven or uh, you know, a sewing machine or a China, like equate it. It has to be something unique to your business or a, a piece of specialized equipment um, that that's involved in in your process. So um, we China to help people understand. Um, so like processing facilities, if if there's a piece of equipment that is very specific to your industry and you need that, that piece of equipment, um, that would qualify. Um, the, the nice thing about that is it's equipment only and, and you don't have to do any environmentals because it's federal government. So you don't have to do any environmentals or NEPA studies or anything. Just put in for your piece of equipment. If you get awarded it, it's a reimbursable grant. You buy the equipment, you reimburse it. 
The second portion is the infrastructure grant, and that's um, up to, um, it's a minimum of $100,000. There's no maximum necessarily on that because the federal government said the maximum was $3 million, but we only have in that category $2.4 million to, to award. And so somebody technically could come in and apply for the entire thing. And we've had people apply for like additional rail um, to build up their uh, mix to their facility. We've had people that have talked to us about um, building a building. Um, if it's specifically for the middle of the supply chain, so processing or something like that, um, we can. What's that? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, I sound like a gunshot there. Uh, so, so anyway, so uh, if you have questions uh, on this program, there is someone in our office you can contact directly. Um, it, it, like I said, it needs to be middle of the supply chain. Um, the applications will be brought in. A review committee will review them, and um, and then they will be scored and rank and ultimately the commissioner makes a final decision. Um, the, the one caveat for this is that it does have to be for human, it has to be a food product, it has to be for human consumption. And so um, like for cattle feed or if you're doing um, uh, uh, sowing something or, or things like that, they don't qualify. It has to be for human consumption. It's for food processing. Um, projects are different from other ongoing operations and organizations because unlike uh, operation, projects have a limited duration with a defined beginning and end. A project will also have to have an uh, overreaching goal that the applicant wants to accomplish through a series of individual activities and tasks. It's a lot of federal wording. Essentially, you have to the project is is um, specific to what you want. So if you're adding a building, that's all you can you can say your project is in the grant is it adding this this building, and then what's your you have to provide tasks and goals that you want to accomplish along the way. Um, so and and we can help you with that. <coughs> There's. Uh, an individual, and I know I'm listed, I'm not the expert, and so um, Deanna Grishetsky, um yes. is the lady in our office that, and I have a hard time saying her name, <laughs> um, uh, She she's the lady in our office that is handling this, so her number and information are up there. If you have questions, please reach out to Deanna, even if you think, um, say you have uh, something coming up and, and um, you would need to purchase some equipment or you, you, there's some things that you need to do um, with your business and you're not sure if it qualifies, just give her a call. It never hurts to, to check. Um, this, is, uh, this is money that the department wasn't expecting to handle and, and have and so it's nice we have some another economic development tool to help businesses um, grow and expand. Um, the next program I'd like to visit with you about um, is one that um, we are currently, uh, we just started uh, two years ago. Um, when, when I first came to the department, the department wasn't doing trade shows, wasn't having, uh, wasn't going to uh, <laughs> uh, domestic shows and having a state pavilion. Um, since that time, we have really expanded what we do in our marketing activities for companies. And so, um, the, the individual actually that, that um, is in charge of this is in Spain currently um, with some projects at a trade show. So uh, essentially we, we do um, five domestic shows, four or five domestic shows a year. We put on a state pavilion um, and we have um, North Dakota companies around us. Um, uh, we do have grant dollars available for companies that um, are eligible, and the, the eligibility is you have to be either a specialty crop or you have to be, uh, all of them are food shows. So um, the, that is one of the caveat, is that they are food shows, and I think she has a list of them here. Um, 
so so those are the shows we're doing currently um, the national restaurant show in Chicago that is a, a huge show hundreds of thousands of people come through um, last year we had five booths this year we're gonna have six booths um, plus the de department booth um, North Dakota is starting to be um, one of the larger state pavilions in in the in the state pavilion area um, and so we're just starting to get noticed um, by a lot of these shows um, we're also doing the they did the natural products which um, some of you go to some of these shows was the old Expo West um, that is a trade trade show that features um, food products but they have to be like um, natural and so there's a whole list of how you qualify for that one and then um, that, that was just in Anaheim and we took five we had five moves there um, and now the next one coming up after Spain is the fancy food show and that's in New York we had a lot of Pride Dakota companies actually in the past attend fancy food shows um, and I, um, I know for instance um, Dakota seasonings when they were in Harvey um, they they used to go to the fancy food shows all the time and the restaurant shows there's a lot of different food products there um, and it they are they are technically um, uh, you, you notice they're like natural products and restaurant shows and fancy food and the food and beverage show in Miami is the one coming up in September so they're all food shows you notice there are exceptions if you're related to the food industry and so you'll see people that sell dishes or you'll see people that um, sell you know utensils to restaurants or, or um, if, if you're so inclined you know um, pot holders and things like that um, you just all of these shows the people we vet the companies before they go um, because one of the one of the things you need to, to understand is the people that are coming to these shows want to buy in big volume so um, the, for instance uh, many of you maybe know um, CJ seasoning um, they we took them to Dubai um, in an international show um, there's one buyer that would take 300 cases of their product and that they're currently dealing with. We took them to Egg, to out to Anaheim, to Expo West. Um, we took Kojak popcorn, uh, Kojak pack. Um, they sell their popcorn, and and we're talking major suppliers. Um, some of you have done these shows. I'm, I'm speaking to the choir, I know, but I just want to remind people that it is. These are people that are going to be coming in and, and wanting consistent delivery in large volumes. Um, the, and so you see on there, the, the value added egg companies, companies that um, food is our primary target. They, have, they can be specialty crops, but the specialty crop helps. We have a grant um, available to specialty crop companies too. And then companies that are ready for a larger scale production. Um, the, the trade show, there's an application process. Generally, we get anywhere between five and 10 people that want to go with us on these shows. And so we try to diversify the who's going, um, how many times they can go to a show. Um, and you're eligible up to $7,000. And so I wanted to hit on that because that's really important. Um, is it okay if I leave you 15 minutes? Okay. I'm a talker, so, um, but the, Okay, yeah. So the the seven thousand um, dollars, if you kind of equate that, a booth at one of these shows is um, generally, um, or you can see that. So so that's kind of our cost breakout of what a, attending one of these shows would cost. You're eligible up to seven thousand um, dollars. So it, it takes a significant chunk out of it and, it, and if there's somebody out there that's maybe thinking they'd like to try one of these shows and you know see their larger scale, see what it's like, um, I always say Chicago is the Mac Daddy, that's the big one, 
and the other ones they they get considerably smaller and like Miami would be um, probably one of the smaller ones you would attend and, and that's specific they're all specific to certain areas Miami specific to the Caribbean um, we did take like Cloverdale came with us um, we've had meat companies come with us um, and it's really about um, kind of looking at the shows and seeing a, a fit for your company um, but there are um, tremendous opportunities and, and this is a good way to kind of if you're like hey, maybe we should look at you know seeing if we can expand I'll tell you um, a little secret the, this is kind of how Das Bristles got um, you know she started with Pride of Dakota in, in North Dakota and then started going to some of these larger shows and expanding and getting large customers and that's how you kind of build your customer base so if you have any questions um, certainly you can visit with me about it um, we are very excited about it we hired a new person at the department um, that uh, is specific to domestic and international trade um, it's Shauna Johnson um, once again I'm listed um, I have a little bit more expertise on this I do this a little, a little bit more um, so you can call me too uh, but uh, certainly Shauna would be the one that if you want an application or or want to talk to somebody specifically about the shows um, this this program is um, something we're going to continue to do something we're expanding um, the legislature actually gave us a position and money to go with it um, because they feel strongly that this is a way to bring money back to North Dakota and to expand help Pride of Dakota companies um, and North, other North Dakota companies expand. Um, we work in conjunction with all our international stuff we do. I'll just briefly because I, I don't know how many are inter interested in international but we do do international also. Um, last year we did a trade mission to Vietnam. Uh, this year we are planning to do a trade mission to Taiwan. Um, it is a commissioner-led mission, and we have to, we we uh, contract with a company that uh, puts you in direct contact um, with potential buyers. So you have you set up B two B meetings before you even get there. You'll probably have five or six meetings um, directly with um, someone from um, that country, and uh, they'll they're specifically interested in your product. Um, if if someone signs up and we do not get a company that's interested, generally we tell them so that um, they have the option not to participate. We also then visit all of the companies that are interested in North Dakota products. We go and visit, not all of them because there's a lot, um, but like in Taiwan or, or Vietnam, excuse me, we visited um, four or five co companies. We went and visited their facilities so we could see what it, our product would look like, what what kind of business they have um, so we have that and then the trade office does um, four or five um, trade shows a year and if you're interested in doing an international trade show you can and you're a food company um, you can always apply to APUC and um, I'll let we'll get to we're getting to that but um, uh, you can apply to APUC directly and say you want to participate in a, a international trade show uh, with the department or you want to do a separate one um, the other thing with the new international person um, we are uh, if you have a country that you're particularly interested in if you have a trade show a domestic trade show that you're particularly interested in let us know because um, we're always looking to expand our domestic trade show presence um, I think we're we're going to um, be doing probably six next year um, depending on funding and so um, we're really excited about this program and, and the opportunity um, to, to um, have more people expand the expand the project project I'm going to turn it over um, to um, yeah. Wow <laughs> Is it too early? Yeah. <laughs> Madison Bodine, um, she's not new and she's going to hold that against me. <laughs> Have you ever looked at somebody and just blinked? <laughs> um, so Madison is the um, administrator for the APUC program. Um, many of you are familiar with it and I'll let her kind of walk 
do what's available there. So hi, um, I am not new, but I'm new to a lot of you guys. Um, again, my name is Madison. I have been with the APOC program, I'm going on I think nine months now, so still, still here learning with everyone, but um, really exciting time. So the APOC Product Agricultural Product Utilization Commission, APOC, as you may have heard it, is for creating new wealth and opportunities in the ag industry. It is highly surrounding value-added agriculture. So it's looking at, are you taking a North Dakota agricultural product and doing something new with it? You got an innovative, creative idea on how to promote agricultural products um, stemming from North Dakota and just kind of promoting the industry and growing it. So with the grant program, there are six different types of APUC grants you can get within the overarching APUC. We do have basic and applied research, so a lot of our university systems will actually apply for this, or um, private companies. Um, it can be just truly surrounding the research, whether it is research to expand on a product or to increase its productivity, kind of that research side. Um, I'm going to skip nature based agriculture right now, but farm diversification is are you diversifying your operation? Are you doing something different? Um, innovative ways, again, to kind of build off of your typical commercial production agriculture. Uh, technical assistance is if you are expanding, if you are doing something new, this is kind of a resource to help you get there. This is are you implementing um, new ways to do the, the same process that you've been doing for years? Are you expanding on something? So this is creating a, a way to implement some new ideas into um, your value-added business. Prototype and technology kind of speaks for itself. It is right there with it in the name. Prototypes and um, technology, whether it be software or hardware, something to increase um, the way that products are being utilized, or maybe even it's something that a value-added business can use um, themselves. So going just right back to this nature-based agritourism, so that is you're doing something great um, you're doing something awesome. I'm actually going to skip here. So, and the reason I pulled these two out specifically is I feel like as a Pride of Dakota member, these might be a little bit more applicable. applicable. So, with the nature-based agritourism, you're doing farm and ranch tours. You're having something that's an educational piece that the public can learn from. You have self-harvesting produce, um, trail rides, corn mazes. So, we actually um, last year had a, a project, a gal come through, uh, Pumpkin Pets and Pals, if you've heard of them, um, in southwestern North Dakota, she came through and said, hey, we have a need in the area to get our youth, to get the community involved in agriculture. We have a need for this. It's in Bismarck, it's in Minot, but it's not down here. And so she came in and actually has had a very successful um, project there where she's got you know not just the hay rides and the pumpkin patch but she's got a hands-on experience for um, people in the public to come in and learn about agriculture and how those products can be used and you know how is that food getting to your plates so she had an awesome project there so that is what kind of the nature-based agritourism is is are you being educational are you doing hands-on opportunities for public outside of your own um, one caveat to this, it can't be a community festival, so if you just have a one-day festival, unfortunately, it would be eligible, um, as well as nonprofits. So it does have to be a continuing basis of, are we bringing this to um, the public in the surrounding area? So marketing and utilization is also something that could be potentially very applicable. It's, are you, you know, a lot of you are using North Dakota products. This could be a way to get some of your marketing accomplished. Maybe create a marketing plan you know, bringing in some more ideas outside of maybe a Facebook page, you want to expand into a website, you want to bring in some consulting work to figure out how you need to relabel some of your products. Um, you know, say you're, we've had some pasta companies come in where they've had just the bag. You know, a bag doesn't sit very well on a shelf, it falls over, or maybe it doesn't meet the specifications of product registration. So that is one way that in the past companies have come in and hey, now we have a box, and now we're meeting the specs and regulations, and it's actually allowing that company to expand into greater markets, even outside of North Dakota and the surrounding community. You know, that's, again, promoting a North Dakota agricultural product. So 
just one little example there, um, usability studies as well. So this is actually something where we've had some crush plants um, come in and say, hey, we see a need, but is it feasible in this location? Is it feasible with what's in the surrounding area, whether that be looking at is my, is my rail access good, is my transportation methods, you know, that kind of logistics side, the feasibility is the market there for this product. And that as well can be easily tailored into a Pride of Dakota product too, um, looking at that. So really cool. So with that one though, products need to um, be new to the targeted area. It can't be something that's a saturated uh, market. It does gotta be something that it's bringing something new in um, or an expansion of the existing uses. So. Two, two different types of APUC products within the six, but these definitely could be something applicable to Friday Dakota. So with the APUC grant, so it does have applications on a quarterly basis. You can see the deadlines right there. The most upcoming one is April 1st, so pretty close by, but it is on a continuing quarter. Um, we have roughly 2.6, I believe, still left in the fund, and then we do receive state mail funds um, in July. So it's it's set to be around for a little bit, hopefully, but um, we do take the first 15 eligible applicants. And I say eligible because we just we just vet the applications, make sure that you know they are doing a value-added process, you know, taking a value-added product. The grant period is one year. Um, from typically the day of the meeting to a year out, you can request an extension. So it gives you some flexibility to get, you know, a really structured process, the best of your benefit. Uh, we do have a 25% match. So if you receive a $100,000 grant, you're gonna have to spend $125,000. So just an example, it is a reimbursement grant, um, similar to the ones that John had mentioned earlier. So you do have to spend it to receive it. Um, 250,000 max generally um, up to the discretion of the board and it is two payments so you do receive half the grant up front and then once you've provided all the expenses um, and shown what you've spent and done a final report so the final report I tell people is kind of like a book report in high school it's just a hey this is what we did this is what we use the grant funds for here's how it went and maybe some things we change or things that we loved you know um, just kind of a uh, little check in so all of the application guidelines, they are online. Do you have a question? With the APUC grants, do you have to have a fiduciary agent outside of your organization? So like a fiscal agent type yeah. situation? It's not required, um, but the grant does allow up to 5,000 for a uh, project to use a fiscal agent. Yep, so definitely available. And then the application and everything is online. Um, Email submissions are definitely allowed. So we love email, we have love the digital age, you know, the technology works, but um, you know, it's, it's very easy. Um, I do recommend advanced review. So if you do or have any interest in the APOC application, APOC grant, please um, call me. Um, I have a cell phone, you can text me, even if that's easier for you, email me. I would love to review any applications in advance. Um, and I did just wanna highlight uh, this fund, I know it's been spoken about with some past Pride of Dakota members. Um, so the Agriculture Diversification Development Fund um, ad, it was established to support newer expanding value businesses. So the one thing with this grant is, yes, it is looking at you know agricultural products, byproducts, but the biggest thing that this grant specifically looks at is the impact. You know, is it having an impact to the ag industry, whether it be the region or the area? So. When you're looking at the two, um, and right there it says value added ag businesses just as a little bit of a, a description. You're looking at you know, food production and processing facilities, so those kind of large scale processing facilities. Um, same with pet food, um, commodity processing, so things that have a relatively large impact um, on those. So when you're looking at a buck and ad, um, between the two, the way I kind of describe to people is APUC's more of your intangibles outside of the prototype technology. APUC's your kind of intangibles. It's how are we going to get this done? How can we best get it done? How can we best promote North Dakota, North Dakota products? And then add as kind of your tangible, the large scale. Um, you know, we've had crushed plants coming in. It's a very hot topic. Or animal agribusiness coming in with some of these larger um, 
feedlot facilities, you know, that's kind of what that one's a little bit generated towards. Um, so we do have with both boards, um, commission members that appreciate your guys' time making the brave battle on North Dakota roads over here. So appreciate it. And Does anybody have any questions before we exit stage or um, for any of the programs we discussed? Shy group? Or else we did a really good job. The, right? uh, <laughs> the ADD has what kind of a limit and uh, what's left in it? Is there the, the fund have a limit to start with, right? Yeah. Yep. So with the ad grant, a project is limited at 500000 um, as far as that limit goes, as far as what's left in the fund, I think it's just over, it's just under three million. Um, so with that, it is a limit of five hundred thousand. The board highly stresses that there is, there's no match by t by law. There's no match, but they do really um, encourage that company having a personal investment into it um, as well. So it it is limited. Kind of at 500000 but they want to see the grander scale, too, as well. Well, you can use part of, let's say you had a business already, you could use that part of your fund in there that you've already got your capital into it? It has well, to be You have expansion. to do it in the new project, you have to put in so much capital, too, for, right? Is that what it kind of looks like, John? Uh, for, all of the, for all of the grants, whether it's the RFSI, if it's the APUC or AD, all of them is that the, the project moving forward. Okay. So um, if, if you apply, until you sign that document, nothing before that day um, is eligible for reimbursement or match. So it's it's from the, the time you are awarded the grant moving forward. Okay. No fiduciary anymore because when we got the first grant, but we had to have them. Yeah, so APUC used to always require fiscal agents okay. when when they moved to the egg department, the egg department determined, the board determined that um, they would make that a um, an eligible cost, but not a requirement. Okay, so you don't have to give up. We still encourage it. Um, you know, you know, it helps companies that are used to dealing with with grants have somebody to look at it, make sure you're submitting the right information, make sure you're tracking stuff right, um, and. It also is a, you know, another kind of checks and balances for us. Um, but like I said, it's not required. We're owned and operated by a nonprofit. Are nonprofits eligible for APA grants? So your nonprofits are not <coughs> are not eligible. Um, Call Madison and okay. if you have a project you're thinking about, uh, so you're kind of a, right. a conundrum for right. us. Um, and so we, um, you put me on the spot, I'm stuttering. <laughs> That's the first time I've known you. <laughs> um, just because I know your situation. So let, yes. let, well, let's talk. Um, the, there may be an opportunity, but the, the by law, the definition says nonprofits are not eligible. The RSFI uh, nonprofits are eligible, though. So, in the in like the next couple of years, we're hoping to take over the rest of the building that we're in. So there would be some. Yeah, yeah. Give us a call, and maybe we can visit with the commission, um, or you can visit with the commission and kind of give the situation okay. and um, see if. if um, there's a, any way we can do it. A loophole? We'll look for loopholes. I'm a loophole guy. <laughs> any other questions? Like I said, if you have any questions, um, you there's lots of contact information up there. Don't hesitate to reach out and call us. Um, and we're, we'd be happy to, to meet with you and um, talk through anything. Um, and uh, there was some I'm, I'm a guy that yeah, you have to introduce yourself, and I did see a couple people sneak in. So if you can tell us who you are and who you're with and, and what you do. Um, us? Yeah, yeah, please. Go ahead, Sam. Oh, uh, so uh, it's a mother-daughter business. Um, we're with Classy Cakes. 
So we do, um, we started with doing cake pops. It was a project in school I started. And then just over the years, we've been doing it for almost nine years. Um, now we've expanded into edible cookie dough. So um, that's what we've been doing. We've been doing a lot of wholesaling. Um, we do the craft shows, private photo shows. Um, and we recently just um, launched our website. I think it was back in November. So that's kind of what we're up to now. So yeah. And who do you have with you? Oh, this is my mom. Joanne. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so. Yeah. And we have our other daughter, Olivia, but she's from Williston. She couldn't make it. Yeah. Oh, welcome. And then I, I, yeah, you snuck it. I'm Val Christensen from Mercer, North Dakota, and I have written a book published about World War II. It's nonfiction about my father in the Navy and their capture of the term of suffering. That's, I also do some art. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And if you have any questions, or if I, if I do have a brochure on the table, you might see Bradley Bean is in there. Um, that is not the